Welcome to this rebroadcast of an interview with Chris Shea, founder of Life's Journey Life Coaching. Learn more about Chris Shea by visiting his website, www.lifesjourneyblog.com. Welcome, 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 and I know everybody, everybody has been saying, what happened to S. Brian? July 4th, July 11th, where have you been? We're back, we're back live. We are back live with the S. Brian radio show, A-S-K-B-R-I-E, and because the only way to spell Brian is B-R-I-E-N, there is no A-N or Y-A-N, it is B-R-I-E-N. Now... For some of you, you may not have listened to the Ask Brian show. I really don't know what to tell you. You are missing out. Uh, finally, you have realized what you've been missing, and finally, you will understand what the Ask Brian radio show is all about. Ask Brian radio is affiliated with the Ask Brian website, askbrian, A-S-K-B-R-I-E-N, dot com. Ask Brian is a website where experts help people solve business problems, through videos, ebooks, blogs, webinars, or actually answering direct questions to users. To become an expert on Ask Brian, you must have a minimum of 10,000 hours. Sounds like a lot? Not really. It's five years working full time in one area. Why? We don't want anyone to just come on board and say, hey, listen, I'm an expert. So, yes, it is a technology site, but guess what? We vet. What does that mean? We actually look at people. We don't say, okay, you're an expert. We don't have an algorithm. We don't have a system that says you're it. Yes, it may take a little bit more time to become an expert, but guess what? We know that you are an expert. Now, what does an expert mean? An expert means somebody who's qualified, that has some background in some subject. 10,000 hours minimum, that's a standard requirement. That is not the only requirement. 10,000 hours does not equate with, okay, I'm an Ask Brian expert. 10,000 hours equates with, okay, I'm in that realm, and we will look at your website, we will interview you, we will look at your resume, we will look at your background, we'll speak to your clients, we'll see if people have had a good experience with yourself. And then, if all of that matters, you can become an Ask Brian expert. Once you become an Ask Brian expert, you can then use the Ask Brian expert logo on your website, which links directly to the Ask Brian site. You can actually post your videos, post your ebooks. Post your blogs, post your webinars, post your webinars on our calendar. So that's all the benefits you get from being an Ask Brian expert. Uh, users can be anyone, can register and ask any question or have any business problems solved. The radio show, Ask Brian, A S K B R I E, and is basically for an affiliate to whereby you can actually learn something each week about business. And we have our great co host. Lynn Z Man. Hey Brian. Always a pleasure being back on this show. And thank two, you. No problem. A couple weeks ago I was losing my voice and everyone was going, Are you gonna be able to do that again? Well, <laughs> we proved them wrong. And I'm sure everybody in upper management is going, What is going on here? I can't stand that loud voice. Well, get used to it, folks. That's Brian, the S we Brian. missed you too much over here. We were all just crying. <laughs> By that the way, how was Hong Kong? It wasn't just Hong Kong. It was Tokyo. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and what do they say in Tokyo? <laughs> uh, Did you konnichiwa. Oh, there we go. Okay. Konnichiwa means good afternoon. <laughs> and since it is afternoon and we are in California, we're going to say konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. For all our Japanese listeners. Now, uh, we also went to Hong Kong, and that was to s basically expand the S. Brian network and expand the S. Brian system and branding. And so we go to a conference every year in Hong Kong where we basically inform people about the S. Brian. No, we weren't there for the protest. No, we weren't there handing out hats. But, of course, I would have liked to do both. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> now, without any further ado, do we have our extremely great speaker, great person, great counselor, great coach, Mr. Chris Shea. Are you there? I am there. 
I, I was I was expecting something bigger on the last name, but that's okay. <laughs> it's a very very long name, and you know it takes a really long time to say it. <laughs> and, and basically, by the way, I was a New York Met fan my entire life. I have to admit that. Yes, and yes, maybe I need to go to counseling for that. But I was a long time Met fan, and they used to play in a place called Shea Stadium, now called. Stadium. Yes, they did. Before before everyone became a bank or a, or a big conglomerate, a staple center. It can't be it can't be anymore named after somebody. It has to be named after a corporation. And so I used to go to Shea Stadium, and then you have to go now to City Field. And I'm sure next year it'll be AT&T Conglomerate or something, or, or Facebook Center or something like that. But anyway, now let's get back into real, real, real discussion here. So, Chris, not everybody knows who you are. I have a brief understanding. So let's get a little bit of a background. Can you give us that? We can do that. Uh, so very briefly, I, uh, I'm a counselor by training. I have been doing counseling for over 20 years. Uh, I focus my counseling on what's called cognitive behavioral therapies, and my specialty is in addictions, uh, mainly drugs and alcohol. Uh, most of my career was in Baltimore City area. Uh, and I'm still in Maryland right now, but I have uh, opened up my own business, and I'm doing uh, life coaching work, consulting work, uh, writing, blogging, podcasting, speaking, all that fun stuff. That's it? That's it. I know. I, I'm I, just a slacker. You, totally. You're like a millennial. <laughs> Well, exactly. You know, so, so you know, just, just. Well, let me go back to rest. You know, rest and sleep. And <laughs> I, I didn't even know that was allowed. And by the way, you just, you just drove right into the area that I wanted to talk to you about: time uh -oh. management. So that that was a very, very good, good lead way. Also, because of my background as an attorney, and I, I know how to lead the witness. But anyway, getting back to. <laughs> Getting back to time management, um, well, let's go over uh, let's go over that subject because that's the subject that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, and I'm trying to understand, uh, you know, time management. When I went to school in the old days, you know, we had like a Franklin planner or a day runner, and we write down all the things we had to do. We put sign goals A, B, C, and that's how we did it. Uh, nowadays, uh, is that the same way that people are doing time management? Do you think, or what? Well, I think most people don't even know what we're talking about when we talk about time <laughs> management. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, I'm old enough to remember the time before computers, you know, that there was such a time. And yeah, the, I remember everybody, the dark age. you know, saying, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> and people were always saying, you know, well, when these, you know, computer devices become like, you know, mainstream, it's going to make our lives so easy all we're going to be doing is laying around. Well, yeah, I think it's made our lives even more hectic, and we're, we're just out there more often, you know, and, and I never get to leave work because as long as my cell phone is with me, work is with me. But I think it is important that we do the time management because, you know, when, when you do comparisons to, like, the pre-computer days, Dark Ages, Stone Ages, whatever, to now, people nowadays report less free time, more stress, more anxiety. So you, you have to wonder what role this technology is playing in the addition of, of stresses and, and anxieties that, you know, people before was, didn't really report as much. Uh, you know, and, and you didn't have all this help, so to speak, you know, w with the computers. So I, I really think we need to focus in on time management and, and really try to figure out, you know, what's going to work for me and why do I need to be doing time management. Now, do you still believe – well, I want to go into a couple of subjects, but do you still believe that time management is best mastered electronically or on paper? Honestly, I think it's really whatever works for the person. You know, I, I love technology. I, I have fully embraced this, this wonderful gift. But it's a tool. It's not the end-all, be-all. So 
if as a tool you want to use it as such to help with your time management, I say go for it. If the tool is getting in your way of the time management, then no, we we got to go back to some you know some other way of writing it down or or finding you know some alarm or, or something to to remind you. Uh, but no, honestly, I I don't care as, as long as it's getting done. So let, let's go over what time management is. What does time management mean to you? So for me, time management is taking a holistic picture of what's happening within a chunk of time. You know, let, let's say my waking hours, you know, so for me, the time management is how do I get done what I need to get done, do it as well as I can do it and still maintain a family life, professional life, self care, um, all that stuff that, is involved in non-work plus work. How do I do all of that and do it to the best of my ability? And and, and be allowed to sleep. Absolutely. Well, you know, for an hour or so. Let's not push it. I love, I love that Chris, Chris <laughs> mentioned self-time because a lot of people who own their own businesses, they just have no time for themselves. I, I think everybody has a time crunch nowadays, but uh, let's address that issue. Uh, so, uh, you know, you start a new business, okay, and, you know, time is, is a problem. How does somebody, okay, let's say I just started a business. So I've just opened up my door. Uh, I have a, um, I'm a CPA firm. I just opened up my door. It's not tax season, okay. I'm waiting for that first person to come in. I mean, I would think time management isn't a problem because what? I'm just trying to build and get my first client. But then it's April 14th, and I've got 900 tax returns that have to be done, and I have, and I takes me five minutes to do one, and it's just not going to happen in 24 hours. So I have to then call it something called prioritize. People don't know that anymore. Ooh. Yeah, big, big word. It's almost like yeah. it's almost like Sesame Street. Okay, boys and girls, our new word today is prioritize. <laughs> that, that's not English, right? That's like an old Latin phrase from the Dark Ages. <laughs> Uh, you should see the looks I'm getting around here. But anyway, um, <laughs> I, I do think that's a very important thing. So uh, th this is the way I do it. You tell me, because may, I, maybe I need some help. The, the way I do it is I write down everything I need to I need to do. And then every day I add to the list anything that comes up. And every day that I accomplish something, I cross it off my list. But that's a very, very standard, just a generalization and a generalized list. Uh, the reality is, um, how, the way I, that's the way I do it. I write that on my list, and every day I prioritize what needs to get done that day, A, B, or C. I, um, I learned a system called the Franklin Planner uh, back in the day, and that's what they told me. They said, stuff that you need to get done absolutely positively that day, that's your A. B, stuff that you really want to get done that day and you should get done that day, that's a B. Everything else is a C. You make sure you get all your A's done, as many B's as you can, add to your list every day, and the next day you redo your list every day. That's how I do it. Is that a good system? Does it work for you? It works for me. That's a good system. Now, what, what – See. Go ahead. Well, because the, the way that I'm looking at this, you know, I, I'm not the type to, you know, necessarily when it comes to, um, you know, the business realm and business consulting to come in and say, all right, I have the answers, I have the program, here's what you're going to do, and if you do it this way, you're going to be successful. Because everybody's different. You know, so I could look at what you're doing within you know, that planner and say, all right, I get what you're doing. Um, I wouldn't do it that way, and like there's this new fancy-fangled app that will do all of that for you, so here I'm going to consult and say, you got to do this app. But then you get totally messed up because you're not used to doing it that way, and it doesn't make sense to you that way. And, um, but the one thing I would add, though, that I, I think is good is, is no matter how you're doing it, you also have to have reasonable expectations, and that's part of that ABC you were talking about. But when you look at it, there really should only be maybe three, four tops, things that have to get done within that day because if your expectations are so unreasonable you're going to set yourself up for failure 
And the problem is you're going to end up at, at the end of that day saying, not only did I not accomplish what I wanted to, but because I didn't meet those expectations, there's something wrong with me. And now we're going to start going to the downward spiral of negativity. When in reality, there might not be anything wrong with you except for you had way too high expectations that were totally unreasonable. So how do you create reasonable expectations? Well, you really have to get honest with yourself and start figuring out what can I and can't I do realistically and stick to that. Because a lot of times, especially I would say, you know, with entrepreneurs who are, you know, starting out doing their own business, it's only them. They don't have a team. You know, you know, you get into this mode, well, I've got to do everything and it's only me. So everything becomes that priority. That's an unreasonable expectation. What you really have to figure out is what can I do, what can't I do? In those areas that you can't do something, either for lack of time, lack of talent, lack of education, whatever, not going to come up with another solution. So it's not that I'm going to fumble through with all of this, not if you want a business to succeed. It becomes, all right, here's what I know, here's what I'm good at, here's what I can do, here's what's reasonable, and I know I can do it. These other things I'm going to have to come up with another solution for. And then that can become part of my to-do list, come up with a solution. So I think one of the, the things we need to do in time management is also begin to understand those areas that I can't do things, I'm going to need to find somebody else or some other agency or some other idea to make that happen. Now, so – uh, I don't want to go specifically into what you're doing today, but on your list today, how many projects do you have on your list today? So on my list today, I have three. Um, I have so far gotten through two of them. Um, but, well, the day isn't as young as yours is. Um, but I still have time. Uh, so, you know, I'm coming up on close to 4.30, so, you know, my day's getting a little bit shorter, but, yeah, I, I only had the three. Now, if I were doing your way of the ABC, if you were to look at my C list, oh, the thing's massive. There is so much that has to get done that I would love to do that would, like, make me so happy if I could get it done. Um, but that's the way low priorities, you know, those are the, Hey, if you ever have a free moment because they gave another hour to the day, go do it. Uh, but yeah, that list just continues to grow. doesn't really get shorter. Does you, do you see list turn into B and A items at some point? They do. The top ones on what we would call my C list do get moved over, um, but I, my, my C list is also not just what would get done, but also a type of wish list. You know, if I had that extra hour to set something else up, this would be a great thing to do. You know, like, like say, for instance, you know, if, if I could put up a, a really useful help desk on the website, I would love to do that. But it's not a priority. Nobody's really asking me for it. I just think it would be nice to have it there. But it's going to take time to set it up. You know, if you want something good, you're going to have to program and, you know, get it in there. So it's things like that that, yeah, that would be great to have. That would be wonderful to do. But if I'm going to spend a couple hours on that, but in the meantime, I got broken links. I've got, you know, outdated articles, uh, whatever. You know, those should really be the priority issues for that hour two hours that I have. Now, do you do your own website? Yes and no. Um, I do you have... Like a, you speak like an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> I do have someone in my family, and actually my youngest daughter is in law school. So, um, <laughs> my, my condolences. But no, I, I, I have learned through the years <laughs> of... Um, being an administrator, that, that you kind of talk like a, a politician or a lawyer. Um, but the yes and no being, I, I do have a company which is hosting my site, and they will do major things to it. If I want another page added, if I want a whole redesign, that's on them. 
if I'm adding some content, updating content, changing a page, fixing a page, things like that, I can do all that. So I, I know enough to be dangerous with it, but when it gets really dangerous, I throw it over to them. Is that on your C list? What, to learn how to be less dangerous? <laughs> you have to add content to your website. <laughs> Oh, that, that would be, if I had the three lists, that would be on A, B, and C. Um, you know, one of the things that in today's day and age, if, if you want a business to succeed, your website is it. And really what it comes down to is that site has to be updated all the time. So constant, you know, looking at it. So, yeah, that that's in the A, B, and C. You know, how frequently are you posting things? When was the last time you checked over the SEO? When was the last time you updated the SEO? You know, what other things might look good? You know, have, have people redesigned websites into whatever the latest trend is? You know, so does yours still look 10 years old? Um, uh, so, so, yeah. Uh, we, we'll be right back because we got to take a break, and the station manager is, like, freaking out right now, like, what's going on here, Peter? you got to stop. So we'll be right back. Western Bagel has been serving signature bagels, sandwiches, and hand-roasted coffee since 1947. They're family-owned and operated with 11 locations across SoCal, including Santa Clarita on Bouquet and the Old Kmart Shopping Center. Western Bagel makes their own whipped cream cheese, offering over 10 flavors along with other goodies, pastries, cookies, and muffins. Delicious Western Bagels. Check out their Bagel Brad Dill of the Week, emailed to you every Monday when you register at westernbagel.com. Healthcare can be difficult if you're underinsured or have Medi-Cal. Samuel Dixon Family Health Center can help. Services are available on a sliding fee schedule. The mission of the Samuel Dixon Family Health Center is to give the Santa Clarita Valley access to affordable, quality primary care. There are three locations to serve you, Canyon Country, Newhall, and Valverde. Go to sdfhc.org for more information and to find the location most convenient for you. Unless you've been living on an ice flow in Antarctica, you've heard about CBD, right? But you may not have heard about Ease. That's E-A-Z-E. Whether it's CBD soap, spray, lotion, whatever, Ease delivers your CBD order right to your door at very friendly prices. CBD delivery, easy and hassle-free. So for a wide selection of curated CBD products and great values, go to easewellness.com. That's easewellness.com. E-A-Z-E wellness.com. If you have a business problem, if someone doesn't honor their agreement and you need an aggressive attorney with over 27 years experience, the law office of Peter Bronstein has helped partners resolve disputes, franchisees resolve disputes, and other business owners who have a challenge. Let the law office of Peter Bronstein take your stress away. Visit LACorporateAttorney.com. Don't wait too long and lose your rights. Solve your business challenge problem today. Visit LACorporateAttorney.com. Why did Mercedes-Benz of Valencia win the Dealer of Excellence Award in 2019? Because they strive to provide the most outstanding sales experience. Mercedes-Benz of Valencia. They know you have high expectations. Their stellar team will meet and exceed those expectations. That's why they were named Mercedes Best of the Best, placing them in the top 10% of all dealers. Find out how you can lease a new Mercedes for practically the same price as a Toyota or Honda. Details at mbzvalencia.com. That's mbzvalencia.com. Hometown, your hometown station. Welcome back. You're listening to the Ask Brian Radio Show. How do you spell that? With an E. A-S-K-B-R-I-E. And, and it's askbrian.com. We're back on the show, Ask Brian Radio. We have a great guest today. His name is Chris Shay. Much better. That? that was All great, right. Brian. Great. And my co-host, Lindsay Man. Thank you. <laughs> In case you didn't know her name. All right, so we're back. Right before the break, 
we were talking about uh, prioritization and the website and how the website was an A, B, and C. Prioritization we'd gone over early in the show, and that was A meant had to get done that day. That was my method. B, it should get done that day. And C, yeah, when I get to it, I get to it, you know? Kind of like my homework as a kid, which is why I'm on the radio now. Um, so anyway, when we were talking about this, you were saying basically your website is A, B, and C. And by the way, what is your website? Uh, the website address is lifesjourneyblog.com. And what is that website about? So that website gives you everything and more of what you would like to know about me and how to contact me and all that good stuff. Uh, that's where I put my blog posts, my articles, uh, the services that I offer. The links are right there if you want to make an appointment. Uh, my store is right there. The podcast episodes are right there. So really that that's the home. Everything sits right there don't need to go anywhere else you got it all now do you do everything from your home base or do you actually go out to where people are located yes and yes I like so that. yes exactly but a little more detail so <laughs> um with the technology that we're talking about it does allow me to do this anywhere we are so some of the things that i do in the coaching side of the business is through internet video sessions. So it doesn't matter where I am or where the client is, we can still connect. And I, I've had clients who are out on vacation who I normally see in my office, because I do have one of those as well, there is a physical office, uh, that they see me in the office and then they go on vacation, but they still wanna see me, so we do it through uh, the internet. I have clients, because they have a long commute, uh, to work, we do it while they're driving into work, and that's when the session happens to be. So, you know, they just get on their phone, and of course, they're not holding their phone, um, but we can still video as they're driving and, uh, you know, get in a session. So it it's really wonderful because, you know, I could be on the road if I'm consulting with a business outside of Maryland or, you know, if I'm giving a talk at a conference or whatever, I can still keep up my clients. Um, just because there is that technology flexibility. What is the number one reason people call you or contact you? Besides addiction, the number one reason would be stress and anxiety in life. So, are but there, I, I think is it mostly so? Is you dealing mostly with stress situations? Yeah. Most people are coming to me for the life coaching to, to say, you know, my life is stressful, my job is the worst, and, you know, all, all of these negatives, uh, you know, in, in life. What I find for most people, that's what they're feeling, but what's really going on is they're looking for a purpose in life. But it's being manifest or showing itself through stress and anxiety. So it's, it's kind of one of these things, you know, what is my life about? Where am I going with my life? Uh, those types of issues. Isn't that the, and, and that's really what the bottom line is. Isn't that the proverbial question always about everybody? You know, where am I going in life? Whether or not you're 21 years old and you go, where am I going to be in my life? Or even 50 and you go, like, where have I been and how am I going to get to the next stage? And now I'm older and where am I going and what happened to my life? I mean, isn't it always the same thing? So how do you turn the negativity into positivity? I love turning negativity into positivity. That, that is one of the things I tell everybody. We, we need to start doing that. Uh, the more you see the negative, you're always going to see the negative. Um, so one of the things, you know, if, if somebody is questioning, you know, what is my purpose? What is my meaning? Where am I going? What am I going to do? All those types of questions. One, I say that's not negative to me. That's positive. Because if you're asking those questions, you, you are probably actually wanting a solution. And... The fact that you're asking the question, you're already way down the road to finding that solution. So let's let's just change our perspective on that piece right there. There's nothing wrong with questioning. But we also then really have to, you know, just see life from a whole different perspective. And whatever is happening, you know, 
we can acknowledge what the negatives are. I'm, I'm not saying to deny the negatives. That's part of our reality. But we don't want to just focus there. So we can say, here's all the negatives going on in my life right now. But I still want to know what are the positives going on in your life right now. There's always something that you can find that becomes positive. And, and I, I have yet to find somebody where I can't flip something around on them, you know, to, to show that positive. But then to help teach them that if we look at things differently, then we're going to see it differently. You know, one of the examples I give is, is that proverbial, is the glass half full or half empty? You know, it depends how you're looking at it. Is it half full or half empty? I look at the glass and say the glass is totally full. I was going to say the same thing, but okay. Um, All right, well, why do you think it's totally full? Because life is a bunch of positivities, and you're only going, you know, you're just growing. And as you grow, things are happening more and more, and, and you just – uh, the glass is, is full because it's full of all the opportunities you have in your life to expand and grow. How wonderfully esoteric. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that, that was great, although I was actually thinking a physical glass filled with physical liquid. Yeah, me too. I, I think it, it's not growing. It's not going anywhere, right? It's just well, there. It's, 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 it's in the middle. <laughs> if the glass was full, I would have drank the, the glass. I'm always thirsty. <laughs> So, you know, what, when most people are looking at this not as wonderfully philosophical as you did, and I actually like the philosophical piece, totally agree with what you said. Yeah. But for me, you know, if we're looking at this glass with actual liquid in it, and somebody says, well, is that half full or half empty, and that's my positive or negative, I look at it and say it's totally full because the areas where the liquid is not has air. See, nobody said it had to be totally full with the same substance. Well, so the glass is always full. Well, and and uh, and water is H two O, right? From chemical chemical chemi exactly. Glass. And air is what is O, isn't it? Oxygen. Exactly. So it's it's basically it's all O. And, and right, o, just and, o very stand, and O stands for optimism. <laughs> so. See, the problem is now you just said it. I can't take it now. That was excellent. <laughs> That would have been a great blog entry, <laughs> and you just said it. <laughs> I will I will allow you to license it and use it because <laughs> I'm an attorney, and I always license and franchise stuff. Anyway. Oh, I, I figure the paperwork will be coming my way. But <laughs> Yeah, well, that release, no, it, the release form would be three or four pages long. But anyway. Exactly. But no, seriously, though, what you just said is totally what I'm saying, and, and that's what I'm trying to get my clients to understand You know, is that – we just have to start looking at things from both views. Again, we're not going to ignore the negative, but we also have to focus that life is not 100% negative, even if that's the way we feel it is. So I have a, I have a good question for you, and, and I've had a lot of people that I've spoken to that have negative or, or have dealing with negative issues, and their response to me is this. Peter, I'm not being negative. I'm being realistic. How do you respond to that? Oh, I love that. I, I'm all about realism. I mean, we mindfulness talks about living in the present moment. And if we're living in the present moment, that's what's real. So I would say I'm a realist too. But using that exact same philosophy, again, uh, I don't want to say against them as negative, uh, agreeing with them in their philosophical approach, what I would say is, okay, reality has all these negatives, and that is reality. But if you can name me some positives, is that not also reality? Absolutely. So we're not – I'm not being naive. I'm not trying to say let's live in some Disney fantasy here. What, what I'm looking at is the reality, and the reality is sometimes life throws us lemons, and they hurt. Or you make lemonade. Like, exactly, and that's also reality. So I can take those lemons with all my bruises and sores, make the lemonade, and here we go. But again, all of that's happening in reality. I'm not getting out of reality. I'm just saying, you're, you know, people who are negative are just viewing reality in one perspective, and you're ignoring the other side of, of the reality. And reality is both sides of, of this lemon coin, whatever. Here's another question, and then uh, we're, we're going to go back more on subject. So a lot of people say they have goals, and they and they write down, "I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to be," you know, might be, I don't know. Uh, 
whatever they are, rich, this, that, this, that, this, that, right? And people look at them and go, well, those are great goals to have, but you have to get there. You're not there yet. And so those goals are overly optimistic, and, and you have to kind of taper down your goals. What do you say to those people? Well, going back to the real list, I mean, sometimes that is true. Um, you know, just like in what we were saying is the goal of what I'm going to get done in one day, you know, we can be unrealistic w within the goals. What I say is, you know, we need to look at goals which we figure we can achieve, and that might be achieving with help. Nobody says we don't need to have help. Can you achieve that goal? And what I also like for talking about life goals, does it challenge you to move a bit beyond? So, you know, we can look at unrealistic goals and say avoid the unrealistic goals, but we can also look at these goals and say, well, you know, it could happen, but it's going to stretch me a little bit. And then I would say that's good because we need to be stretched a little bit. Absolutely. Absolutely. You cannot, to, in my belief, you have to have, I don't say unrealistic goals, but I, you have to have goals and the goals should be a little bit higher than where you want to be. Why? Because to me, if you want to go a hundred yards, you might go 98. Okay. So if you have your goal at 120, you're going to go the 110 and exceed your goal. And my, my belief always is you have to have, you have to have that out there. That's what can drive you and push you. If you don't have something out there like that, and it doesn't have to be an uh, unrealistic goal, but a goal that's a very, very hard goal to achieve, you're never going to – you always, to me, believe to get to that goal is very difficult. You can get very, very close. You might not get there. But guess what? If your goal is, a, is a 110 yards and you go 100 and your goal really was only 100, you're going to make it. Yeah. So uh, exactly, you know, we need it to be realistic with challenging ourselves to always be growing I into hopefully better people, you know, and, and better understanding of, of who we are. Um, and whatever that challenge is, it may be a physical challenge, maybe a mental, emotional, whatever challenge that that may be. Yes, we, we definitely need to, uh, you know, push and challenge ourselves. So we're on the topic of challenges. Um, every professional faces. The I definitely can beat you in a race. <laughs> okay, that was a challenge. Okay, that depends on what kind of a race. <laughs> <laughs> so every professional has clients. Um, whether you're an attorney and you have a client and they need to listen to you, or you're a personal trainer and you have, uh, you know, your client needs to listen to what you're saying. And and if you're, uh, you know, providing advice and helping people in addictions, they also need to listen to you. Uh, there, there's got to be sometimes that one client, one or two clients that don't listen to you, or maybe more than that. How do you deal with those challenges? And, and yes, that, that is true. Um, you know, what commonly, if, if I were to generalize the, the answer for a moment, you would still look at then, well, what is the reason that they're speaking with you to begin with? You know, so like if somebody's coming to me with, with the life coaching and, and they're talking about, you know, whatever it is they want in the goals and then everything I'm saying is no, 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 you know, then at some point I just have to remind them, well, you came to me. Right. And then we try to work from there. You know, uh, I didn't seek you out. So you voluntarily walked in here, said you had a goal. Because really what we want to look at it at that point is, well, what is the opposition? You know, is it really the opposition to what I'm suggesting, or is it just opposition to change? Are they really not as ready as they thought they were? Did now talking about it make it real and therefore make it a little bit more scary? So if we can find some of those areas, work on those, we can get back on track. Now, there's going to be some who just don't want it. And I think going back to that realist, I'm just realistic with my clients. You know, and I had a person recently who seen me for uh, alcohol issues, and he was doing absolutely nothing that I was suggesting, making no life changes, and then coming in here every week and saying, I don't know why I'm relapsing. I don't know why I'm relapsing. Well, it's obvious. Mm -hmm. And I just finally looked at him and said, look, here's the way I see it. You don't want to stop drinking. And, and he, you know, he's like, well, I don't like the effects and all. I said, see, look at that answer. 
your response to me was, I don't like the effects. You didn't say, no, I do want to stop drinking. So I just actually just confronted him with it and said, you aren't ready yet. You don't want to stop. This is why you're not doing it. And did he stop so, thereafter? He stopped seeing me. <laughs> <laughs> That's because you weren't providing beers. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, you know, I mean, I, I told him, you know, that that really came down to that choice, you know, that we can keep working on this if he truly wanted to do it for himself. But if he really wasn't ready to do this, then honestly, he's wasting his money is really what it came down to for me. So, no, I didn't expect him to come back. My hope is one day he will because he definitely has a problem. He just doesn't see the problem yet. See, the problem is still all the exteriors, everybody else getting on his case. When's so, the, you know, he's not there yet. How long ago was the last time you saw him? Oh, that was only a month, month and a half ago. Okay. Right, so. Now, somebody like that, we also have to keep in mind for people who are saying, like, whoa, that was really harsh. Um, I've been seeing him for about six months on a weekly basis. So we already had a rapport. This wasn't like session two. <laughs> Well, it could be tough love, too. Um, Best way I looked at it. Do you think it's the psychology, though, that people understand how some people make, how some people, they get through it, and others, they just, they don't, they can't see, uh, they can't make sense of it. I, I, when you say they're just not ready yet, I, I don't know. I think there's so many resources out there. Um, you know, if they just take in enough of it, they can finally comprehend. I think it's a comprehension thing, though. It, 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 it is comprehension. There definitely are the resources, but it, it's also got to come from within. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, uh, take a, a topic, you know, like people who decide I'm going to go to the gym. You know, for somebody who just says, well, I'm going to start going to the gym, how long do they last? They what, a month, a yeah. couple months? Exactly. For most, because they really didn't believe in it. You know, they saw everything on TV. Maybe somebody told them. Maybe the doctor mentioned it. But they didn't really believe it. They're just doing what they think is the right thing to do. So you're not going to have that staying power if you don't have that internal belief that, hey, this is good for me and this is something I want to do and I'm really enjoying this. So, you know, you turn it in over to the addiction side, and, and a lot of it is in that same way. You know, if I really don't believe that I need to change my life, I'm not going to do it for the long haul. I'm going to do it until somebody gets off my back. We're going to be right back, and when we get right back, you're going to explain to us how can somebody make that change. We have a wonderful, wonderful guest. His name is Chris. Shay. See, I reversed it. and <laughs> Good reversal. And Lynn. And that's my co-host, Lindsay Mann. We're back with Chris Shea. Chris, right before the break, we were talking about, and I think we discussed, when somebody doesn't want to make a change, they're not going to be able to make that change. They have to have it in their heart. They might pay money to a lawyer, to a consultant, to a, a, a fitness trainer, but unless they actually have it in their heart to make that change, it really doesn't matter. They may be doing it because the doctor says you need to work out. The lawyer says you've got a legal problem, you need to deal with it, or the consultant or some m mother or someone who says you need to get your problem under control, you need to go see someone. But if they don't believe it, it doesn't matter if they're going, they're not going to change. What can make a person change? You're on. The billion so dollars. what can <laughs> it, it really is, to be honest. Um, for most people, it's finding – another person who's also doing it or a group and joining in with that because now we have some accountability and if things are getting tough you got somebody else who you can you know help you through this um but also when you look at behaviors most of us within our uh ingrained behavior if we do the same thing over and over for about a month or so it's going to become ingrained in us so, you know, if you are talking about going to the gym, it's probably not daily. But if you're going, say, three times a week on the same days of the week, 
do that for a month, two months, and it's going to start to become your habit. And the body just kind of takes over, and it, it becomes the thing that, oh, I got to go work out. And you begin to miss it if you don't go. Once that piece happens, now you know you're hooked. And once you're hooked, you know, you, you're going to keep doing it. So if you really want to make a change within your life, try to be consistent in whatever that change is going to be. You know, so if you're going to the gym three days a week, try to do that every single week, same day, same time. That becomes your routine. I mean, it's only two days a week. That's fine, too. Again, let's be reasonable. But whatever it's going to be, stick with it and struggle through it. It will get better. It will become routine. How often do you need to do something to be, make it a routine? Well, more often the better, you know, but it, it really does depend on what we're talking about. Uh, so, you know, if we're talking about somebody with an addiction, well, that becomes like, you know, every minute of every day, you know, that they're hopefully changing their lives in the sense of how I see the world and what I'm thinking of and how I deal with my cravings and all that. Um, again, if you're talking about the gym, you know, probably like three days a week, do that for a month and a half-ish, you're probably going to start to get into a routine. Um, go once a week, it's going to take a lot longer for it to become routine. You know, you can still do it, and I would still say the same thing. If, if you can only, you know, again, let's be reasonable. If you can only do it once a week, try to do it on the same day at the same time every week, eventually it will become your pattern. It's just going to take a lot longer. But, again, don't flip it around. Right. Um, so it really does depend on, on what you're doing. But, yeah, the, the more often you can do it, the better. Right. Chris, I have one last question for you. What, what Clearly you're passionate about this. Why are you passionate about helping people? I've always wanted to help people. I don't know, since I was young. But more recently, why I'm passionate, because I've – made some of these changes in my life. I had to make some of these changes in my life. And when I saw making those changes that it actually worked and I like how I feel now better than before, combine that with always wanting to help people, I'm just passionate to say, hey, look, it works. Here's a way you can do it. And let's spread this out to everybody who can because if everybody starts feeling better and everybody starts looking at positives with the negatives, we're going to have a whole better world. Absolutely. All right. Well, guys out there listening, um, you guys can catch Chris at lifesjourneyblog.com. That's lifesjourneyblog.com. Also, he's on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thank you very much, Chris. You've been a great guest. Uh, we'll have you back on uh, down, down the road. Thank you very much. Ask Brian, A-S-K-B-R-I-E-N. KHCS 1220 and 98.1 FM with my co-host, Lindsay Mack. Thank you. Thank you.